Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and in this tutorial, we're going to customize the event page in the Squarespace website. At the time of recording this, we don't have a lot of options when it comes to the design of that event page, so we're going to use a little bit of CSS to get creative. As always, the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you to teach you exactly how to use these codes inside Squarespace. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace looking at an individual event. When I hop into edit mode and I select edit section, the only thing I can adjust is the page spacing. That's the difference between the top and the bottom of the page and the actual content. I can make that small, medium, or large, or custom, and that's about it. You can also change the colors to match a different color theme. Now when it comes to editing the content of the event, I want you to notice that I'm limited to adding content blocks on the right hand side of the screen. If you've ever edited a blog post inside Squarespace, you'll be familiar with this interface. This is what's known as Classic Editor. I can click a plus sign and add any content block I want, and I can drag things around to drop them in different locations to organize and rearrange the content, change the size of objects. We've got a little bit of flexibility here, but that's about all we can do. We can't layer content and we can't edit mobile separately. We're limited to working within content blocks in this specific grid known as Classic Editor. But we can do some creative things with custom code, so let's go ahead and get to it. I'll select Save and Exit, and over here on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to navigate to Pages, then I'll select Website Tools, and then Custom CSS. Now, all of these codes are in the description below, but let's work through this together line by line. This first set of code right here says Flex Direction Column, and did you see the magic that just happened? We now have the full page width to work with when it comes to adding and editing content. I'll select save, we'll click edit one more time just so I can show you here. We can now add content blocks that'll span the full width of the page. I'll go ahead and select exit and we'll get back to adding some more code. Although we've made it full width, this content at the top doesn't look great. So I'm going to add a few more lines of code and I'll share with you what we just did. This first line of code right here said take that event title and align it to the center of the page and make it a larger font size. This is super customizable. You can change this font size to anything you want it to be, making it gigantic or a little bit smaller, whatever size suits the style of your own site. And you can use any other text or font properties you want to customize this title. Maybe you want the color to be a vibrant red. I'll say color red important. And now that color really pops out of the page. After that, we adjusted the metadata, which is the date and the time that we have for the specific event. We said display flex, justify content center, and that put it right here in the center of the page. If I remove those lines of code, it's going to be scooted over to the side and they'll be stacked. Now, if I paste it here, that'll pull them to the center and put them next to each other. After that, I said margin auto, but I realize as I'm recording this, I don't really need that line anymore because we're doing justify center. So let's go ahead and remove that. I'll remove that from the code below as well. We've got display flex, justify content center. All right, I also said margin bottom to REM, and that creates some space between this information and the actual content blocks in this section. If I remove that margin bottom, you'll see they scoot closer together. Super customizable, just the display style I wanted to create, so I added that line of code. Now, after that, this part's a little important. I needed to add a margin right to the date because watch what happens when we remove it. The time scoots right next to the year, way too close together, so we needed a little bit of space right there. Again, super duper customizable. This was just me adding a little margin to the right. Now that we've created the full page width, we've updated the title, we've moved the time to be the same line as the date, and it spans across the whole page. Let's talk about the very bottom of the page where we have our pagination. I'm going to select save on the top left hand side of my screen because I want to show you that we can actually change the font styles without using code. If I hop into my site styles menu, select fonts, and then choose assign styles, I'm just pressing control F on my keyboard to find the event here. It'll be in the list. There we go. Events item. I didn't want to scroll through the whole thing. Here we can change the pagination. Right now it's set to match a heading, but I can change this. I can say match my paragraph font. Or I can say, let's do a custom one and choose a different font family, font weight, style, size, all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and reduce the size. We'll set it to a custom one, maybe pulling it down to how about 2 REM. There we go. I like the size of that one. Perfect. All right. Now let's go ahead and change the date above it as well. Hopping back in here to our font menu, 
Let's press Control F on our keyboard again to find that event item. All right, let's adjust the pagination date because that font width is way too light. Clicking on this, instead of style miscellaneous, I'll choose custom. And for font weight, I'm going to go up to 500 for Poppins. Poppins is a font with a lot of different weights. Your selection could be different depending upon what font style you've chosen. This just works for me. After you've made the changes you want to see there, select save on the top left-hand side. Now, for those of you who don't want pagination, you don't want people to click through to another event, we can hide that with code. Here's one last line of code that I'll include in the description below. This says on any event collection page, if there's pagination, don't display it. And you'll see instantly the pagination has disappeared. So again, if you want to change the font, use your site styles menu. But if you want to hide it completely, use that line of code. All right, we've done a lot of fun stuff today. I'll go ahead and select save and we'll call this tutorial good to go. That is just the start of all the cool things that custom code can do to make Squarespace unique. If you'd like to learn more, head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash learn. There, I have a free beginner's guide to Squarespace CSS, and I'd love to share that with you. Again, that's insidethesquare.co forward slash learn. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comments. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.